Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Dyson Sphere Program where we're greeted with the glorious sight of fleets of logistics bots flying through the air. So I've been fairly busy in the last stream as, as, as per usual. I've not actually made a new science pack but I've done a few sort of little tinkering bits and pieces over here and I've started using the logistics systems quite a lot more heavily. So in the last stream, in the last video rather, you might, you well hopefully remember that I set up all of these these painting systems here to uh, to cover the all of the uh, the, the science packs that are being fed in here with with painting, which makes them run much faster. And um, uh, sorry, it doesn't. It turns out it doesn't make them run faster and more productively. It makes them run faster or more productively. Now in, in the case of these machines, I think you can only make them run more productively. But in, when you're putting the, putting the paint into other machines like the, um, this one. Yeah, so here we've got the choice between having plus 20% on the product side, so we make, so for every every time we put in, every five we make in the normal way, it, we actually get six out of them. And you can see the blue line going around here that shows the additional productivity. So the yellow line going around is, is producing one from actual ingredients. The blue line going around is producing one out of thin air um, as, the, as, the, as the productivity boost here. Now I can flick this across to speed, production speed up and you'll see that now this is running, that's going around much more quickly but the blue line isn't growing. So I have the option of doing this either way around but it's far more sensible really for, what I'm, for the sort of things I'm doing to be making extra products, especially as in this case we're not actually bringing the paint in fast enough to make the, uh, to make the level 2 paint quite as quick, quickly as we'd like so there's no point in trying to make it go faster anyway. Um, especially as we appear to be running out of coal, which is interesting. I shall have to have a look into that. So, the um, in order, yeah, in order to therefore increase science production any further, I'm going to need to think of other ways so to to, uh, to, to, to 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 boost the production. So, at the moment, we've got the extra 20% being done from these, and that's good. But I can't go any further with that, at least until I develop a new type of paint. And I've managed to stack even more matrix labs up up here to the extent that this one at the top is, appears to be too far to operate even when I'm standing quite close to the bottom of the pile. That's quite funny because it's obviously 3D space. There's a, yes, there's a massive tower of the things there. So, in order to try and improve the uh, the throughput of everything that's going on here, well, at the moment I'm doing a research, which one I'm doing this one, which, actually that's all, all three of these these packs. I'm quite surprised that's, that's working quite as well as it is. But in order to try and improve the rate of making everything, I've come over and I've, I've put in the, the painters on on the inputs for the um, for this system as well, where we're making the yellow science. And as you'll notice, there's now two t two two towers of science production um, uh, labs here get working. So down here we've got we've got the, um, the titanium the crystals. Oh, shush, go away. So along here I've got the uh, the titanium crystals being produced and they're being painted. And over here I've got diamonds coming in and they're being painted as well. So when we feed them into these machines, as you can see, we've now got the speeder or the the boost option thing on both of the ingredients that are coming into this matrix lab and again once again I've got the choice between extra products or extra speed and I think as, as before I think extra products is the way to go with this because I can I can get extra speed by putting in more labs um, but I can't get extra products without putting in lots more ref I can't get more products coming through and therefore more speed without putting in lots and lots of extra um, machines or speeding everything up and still having to provide large quantities more uh, extra of extra uh, resource at the beginning. So I think it's worth making everything that bit cheaper, especially as these stack. So I get 20% discount here. I then get a 20% discount over there where it's being scienced. Or I say 20% discount, 20% boost. And so that's going to get me up to fairly close to well, one and a half times the amount of um, the amount of science being done for every piece of input that comes in over here somewhere. And in order to boost that even further, I've got some additional painting machines over here, uh, painting the the oil refined oil that's going in and painting the carbon that's going in for making the plastic. So the plastic is all being made boosted as well. Um, now I'm not actually then boosting that anywhere else because because unfortunately the way I designed these without taking the painting systems into account so we've got direct insertion happening from this machine straight into here so there's nowhere to put a painter on, on across going across here so whilst these have their ingredients boosted these only have one of the ingredients boosted because I didn't bother to split it off because they're both being fed off the same belt here um, and so I've decided that that slight waste of paint which is just a little bit of coal and a little bit, little bit of diamond is okay it's better to have it, 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 I don't. I don't care that I'm wasting it. Wasting a little bit of that paint. So that, that's that's okay. Then once again over here, I think I've got the same thing with. Have I got direct insertion? Uh. Y yes. Oh, there it is underneath there. Yes, this one is doing direct insertion from this machine into this one, and then the same sort of things up here. Direct insertion from in, into here and here. So I, again, I can't do it on here without a major redesign. So I'm. I'm not doing anything with that for now. 
but i have extended the number of machines here producing the yeah titanium crystals in order to get this work able to work with a second tower because i noticed i was a bit short on the yellow science and as you can see here actually with the with the way the research is going at the moment that is getting used it's I'd say actually it's about stable at the moment so that's that's pretty good purple not so much purple still needs still needs a significant boost we're using that up a lot faster than we use it than we're creating it but one one problem at a time <laughs> so yeah that's going that's going okay okay so the next thing I did or the next thing is, that I have done is I've started to move things off the main bus so this is this is a very very factorio-esque way of doing things in that um, in factorio I tend to always I build up a main bus and then once I start to need things at too high a rate for what the main bus is providing so uh, usually it's I'll move off the, the mining fairly quickly then I'll move off the smelting and then eventually I'll move off producing green circuits to somewhere else and so that's what I've done here we now have this logistics tower which is basically the Dyson Sphere program equivalent of a railway station um, bringing in green science and uh, sorry green green circuits and blue science so what we, then we've got coming out of here we've got those being fed out on green belt two green belts in fact and they're going into this stacker machine here which stacks them up and then they're fed into another stacker which stacks them up again so we've got these four high piles coming out here and then we're merging the belts here in a sort of a somewhat shoddy way I should really be using a um, uh, a splitter in order to do that but this should actually work and the note the notable thing about this system is that I've got one belt the belt that's bringing them out of here is a green belt so that means this belt runs twice as fast and so the belt runs all the way through this piler and that means that we're guaranteed even if even if there's um uh, yeah we're guaranteed to get a, f a full belt of these going into it because they're coming out of they're coming out of the uh, coming out of the logistics tower so there's going to be a full green belt going in there. So this is guaranteed to give me a full, a half green belt coming out at least of um, of the of the double stacked ones, and then it goes onto a yellow belt. So that's a full yellow belt going into here. So it's guaranteed to be a, a half, at least a half yellow belt of quad stacked ones. And so that means these are guaranteed to be quad stacked. I've got some symmetrical, exactly the same thing on the other side. So if green circuit demand gets up to sufficiently high level that this belt is flowing flat out, which it clearly isn't at the moment, then we'll get with well, then these two belt, then these two machines will still be producing the quad piled um, uh, circuits and they'll and we'll have a full belt going along here because it'll sort of filter in from the side so this is basically guaranteed to always be quads coming through here assuming the supply in this in this uh, um, logistics station keeps up with it now I could at the rate it's being used at the moment I could have used yellow belts over here because it's not coming through all that quickly and I could have used a splitter in here to make to to enforce the balancing a little bit better but that would still potentially have left me with only half a belt half the quantity going down here having these green belts in here has made a big difference and they're actually not that expensive going from um, a yellow where are they they're in buildings uh, going from a yellow belt which is iron and gears to a green belt only requires an extra uh, green motor they're called uh, turbines I think only requires one of those and that's not too difficult so so far I have been making these by hand but I'm thinking we're getting to the point where I might just start upgrading all of my belts to, to green belts and using them as the standard because it's not that expensive that said at the beginning of every stream I do seem to come over here and grab out an entire 1500 out of this box and then use pretty much all of them up in the last stream I did that and then I had to come back and grab them all again and I've got 137, no, I've got 1,000 uh, and uh, 1,200-ish left. So I, so I, so okay, I, did, I got through about 1,500 in the stream, which seems to be seems to be fairly typical. Although now that I'm starting to use the logistics towers a bit more and these all these little flying uh, flying robot things, I'm not doing massive long belt runs quite as much. So that's helping quite a bit there. So on the um, on the topic of, of sort of moving things off onto onto sort of separate production factories, that's not what I've done here. This is just another logistics tower that's collecting paint and feeding that out onto the uh, into a paintermatron here, which is painting all of the um, all of the copper ore in order to get me that sweet sweet juicy um, boost on, um, on on copper productivity. So all of the copper that flows down into my base, I'm getting only costs point. I was going to say 0.75, That's not right. 0.8 uh, ore each to make because there's. No wait, that's wrong. It's about 82% of a copper ore to make because it's uh, it's 100. There's 120% of what coming out here of what's going in here. So that's a 20% boost, which means there's about which means there's one extra sixth that we don't need from here. Therefore, 0.82. 80, I think it's about 18% for a, uh, for a, for a sixth. 0.82 of these goes into making each one of these all uh, copper plates, which is an improvement. And then I've done the traditional thing down here. This is only a, this is only stacking to double because now that I've now that I've taken green circuit production off the bus over here, we're not getting through copper anything like as quickly as we were. So yes, 
green circuit production. Or we've set, I've set, also set up a couple, a couple of mines. So there's one. Oh no, that one isn't feeding into. Yeah, there's a few mines scattered around the planet now that are digging up um, whatever ore, whatever ore it is, and feeding it straight into a uh, logistics tower so it can be flown over to where it's needed. So, yes. So green circuit production. Yes, that's what that's what I was actually working towards here. <laughs> so once again, I've done the trick here of having a green belt coming out of the um, out out of the. Uh, logistics tower into the into a into an automatic piler. So that's that, and then and then going onto a yellow belt here. So this is then basically guaranteed to be a full double height belt. I've not done the same on the other side with the copper because we only use half as much copper as we do iron for making these green circuits. Then along here, I've produced this nice little little module here where we have um, the iron iron ore being brought in, smelted into. Um, uh, smelted into iron plates, copper ore being brought in, smelted into copper plates, and then both of those are being made into in, into a green circuit that's then passed out onto the onto the belt here. We've got two belts coming along here. We're then stacking them and then feeding them feeding them into the uh, in, into the logistics tower over here. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure. Oh yes, I was going to say I'm not sure why I'm bothering to stack them in order to feed them in. Um, but the reason I'm stacking them before I feed them in is so that when if in the future I need a lot lot more green circuits than I'm currently producing, I can make another four. Another Another three of these, there's so four of them in total, blop, 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 all, the way, all, all along here. And then, so each one of those is then going to be using the, the little doors on one side of the logistics tower. So I should, by copy, essentially just making copy, another three copies of this, be able to run four, uh, four times, four double belt, four double high belts of um, green circuits into this thing. And then in theory, actually, if I then need even more, I could upgrade the entire thing to green belts and possibly blue belts for the little bit coming out of there. And then we'll have even, and then we'll be able to have that go out twice as far, have twice as many machines on the system. The other thing I, I, I could, could do and probably should do is put painters on here and here in order to boost the amount of circuits we're getting out because we can't, I can't once again I've, I've done direct insertion here so I can't have painters on these things but I could still paint the um, the iron ore and the copper ore as it's being passed around and that would in th that should boost up the amount of um, the circuits I'm getting I haven't done that um, partly because you can only have three different things in a little logistics tower like this. Now I could upgrade it to a full size logistics tower, the interstellar logistics towers, because um, they can they they are backwards compatible with these. You can use them for intraplanetary logistics as well. And they have more things on here. I think they might even have more outputs available on, the, on across the bottom. I'm not certain of that. But even so, but it would still allow me. That would allow me to get paint being brought in here as well. But I I haven't done that yet. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. But this is this is working quite nicely. It's producing green circuits faster than I'm capable of producing them. And as you can see, all of the buffers in here are completely full. So this entire tower system is very happy. Over here, just over here, I've done something very, very similar. Although I think yes, I've used a big logistics tower here because this I required at least four, and I've used the fifth one for the paint as well. So this, as you can see, is making blue circuits, a uh, blue science pack. Sorry, and I put in I put in maximums on on here because I think having having enormous quantities of all of these being stored here is a, a little bit wasteful. So I've, I've brought the buffers down. So there's only only 3,000 or 3,000 or 3,000 circuits and 4,000 blue science being stored here. Uh, a, mere, a mere pittance compared to some of the other ones. Um, oh, these do only have three exits on each side as well. So yeah, uh, that would I'd be slightly limited there uh, if, if, I, if I did upgrade that one. But this, the, yeah, as, as you can see, the system's, work, system's working fine at the moment. It's, it's coming out here. Again, I've done the green belts coming out, stacking it up because just you might as well. Then I'm painting the two ores because the ores, well, as they, as the, the ores as they come in, get smelted directly into magnets and into copper, which then get turned into the coils, and then those and the green circuits get fed into these machines. So once again, I'm doing direct insertion from um, these. These are all balance ratio balance. So we've got the the amount of time it takes these these uh, smelters to make the uh, the number of magnets that are required for a coil is balanced with the amount of time it takes for this to make the number of iron plates, uh, sorry, copper plates that are required for a coil. And the rate this this machine makes coils at is tied to the rate this machine produces science at. And so then we just bring in the green circuits as well. So this whole this whole module here, when it's actually running, will run flat out. All of these all of the machines will run flat out and one, two, three, four, five matrix labs is the correct number to keep that running in balance. And so that will then feed out onto the belt here into the back in, in into the into the tower over here now we've got we've got three of these in here and the reason there's this weird kink in the middle here is if I pick up one of that didn't do what I meant that wasn't what I meant to do that was what I meant to do 
you can see here I've got one of what they call the tropics lines and that means the um, it's the point where because we're on a sphere but we've got a square grid that we're using every so often you get to a point where the, the grid starts to get really really narrow and pinched because the, the planet is getting smaller as you get up to the top of it and so in order to fix that you get a grid correction as we see here so at this point we've got um, the grid is the grid this one big square and I just find a big square as being the darker lines goes across uh, one two three four five little squares but at this this area it's uh, there, there's about a, there's about a square difference, so we, we've made it about 25%. They made the squares about 25% bigger, and that means that there's all kinds of. If you want to then fit in a system like this, you need a bit more space, and therefore when you cross over one of these lines, all of the belts need to wiggle like this. Now they don't actually have to wiggle quite like this. I, what I could do is I could go from here. I could say, okay, that's the one that's in the right place. That's one that's in the right place. I could take this belt and I could go from there to there. But rather than doing that or that or wiggling it as I did before, I could just do a straight line across like that. Um, because Dyson Sphere Program does allow you to do non-orthogonal belts, so I could I could sort of clean all these up a little bit and make them look a little bit better, um, like that. I think that looks that does look slightly better. I should probably I should probably try and do that in the future. This one has had such a small deviation because it was the one that I sort of based all the rest of it on um, that I haven't needed to bother. This one could have come across and just carried on up here, but then there wouldn't have been room for these machines in between them. It was interesting though. This is this is this is the um, this is my first use of blueprints. So I've started using blueprints now. I've got blue science blueprint. And I've got a green circuits one. So this blue science one, I can um, I double click on them, and then we go into blueprint mode, and I can now paste down additional ones. But if I go in here, you see it. It's uh, as it says, it's blueprint areas divided by tropic lines. So it's just it just won't let you do that. But if I needed more blue science to be produced, I could just drop this in here like that, and it'll say, okay, there's some collisions, but that's just the belts on it. So I can say, yeah, that's fine. Do that, and then my belts will fly out. They'll build all that up. And boom, just like that, I've got another um, another area of building up the um, building up the building up the blue science. Now there's, there tend to be a couple of places where things just don't quite work, so you do need to then go in and do a little bit of patching of some of the belts. But it's a it's a really nice easy way of expanding these things. Um, I, I've known that blueprints are a thing for quite a long time, but I've not really played with them, not really used them, because I wasn't sure how, but I, I spent a little bit of time in the last stream messing around with those, and I'm glad I did, because this, is, this has been quite nice. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely, easy way to just expand things very, very quickly. And you should see that as this, as these all sort of start to catch up, if, if, they, if, they have enough, if there's enough room on the belt for them to catch up before they... Uh, before everything fills up, you should see that this, this will eventually fill up all of these, all of these um, along here. Oh, there's, there's an output inserter missing, so let's put one of those in. There we go. <laughs> uh, oh, and there's power missing as well. So you see, there's my blueprints currently aren't quite good enough to, for it to be just drop it, drop them straight in, and everything's great. But they're good enough that I can sort of that I, that it makes the construction easier, and I just need to fix the odd occasional minor bug in there. So that's quite nice. And I was able to build the uh, the green circuit production over here with the blueprints as well, as, as you saw. I'm going to have a brief pause in the video here while I recharge my mech because the battery's getting a little bit low. Now that I've got the blue science being produced off the bus, that makes me think it's time now to start thinking about doing the same with the other science packs. So, what have we got? We've got the next one, obviously, will be red science, so I'll just work through them in order. So, that one is basically just bringing in coal and bringing in hydrogen, which is going to be, I don't know, the hydrogen's going to be slightly interesting, but I think that should be okay. Um, or I could bring in oil and turn it all into hydrogen. Maybe that'd be better, just do it all completely on site. I think I probably won't, though. I think I'll probably have a, um, an oil factory somewhere that processes through that. Then then I'll move on through them, and they just get more and more complicated, and I'll decide at what point... And I'll, I'll have to decide which things I want to be processed, doing the, doing the, where, where I want to be doing processing in their own private factory, so producing the green circuits in this case, and where I, want to, where I think I might as well just do it on site, like producing the coils here, because I don't think there's much else that uses coils, which is part, a large part of why I thought I might as well just do them here. So one of the problems I, I ran into, as you saw, the yellow science earlier was going really, really well. There was tons of that flowing through. But yellow science requires um, oil, refined oil, I think it is. So we needed a lot more of that coming through. And the systems over here just couldn't keep up. They can now, but they couldn't before. <clears throat> so in order, um, and a large part of the problem was that I didn't have enough, um, I didn't have enough oil coming in. So what I've, in order to fix that. I've got. I've now set up an. On this, this, this is the tower I had before. It was bringing in the coal that was being then stacked up, really up to four over here, and then being fed into the uh, energized graphite over here. 
Out of the other side, well, I've got paint coming out of it as well. We'll get to that in a minute. Out of the other side, I've got oil being pumped out along these three belts here. In much the same way that I've got coal coming out on those three. And then again, in exactly the same way that I've got that being stacked, I'm stacking up the I'm stacking up the oil here, then passing it into a couple of um, a couple of uh, mer mergers here. Oh, and there's oil also coming in from the oil mine that's way over the horizon off that way and the oil mine that is right here. So we're still using these, and we're, we're again stacking them, feeding them through a couple of splitters in order to get them properly, uh, properly together. And then paint it the wood. St oh, we're, st we're only stacking them up to two. That's interesting. I thought I was stacking them up to four. But no, we're stacking them up to two, then painting them so that they'll be, uh, so we'll get the, that extra productivity I was talk I've, I've talked about before. Then that comes over here to this splitter, which is then splitting them off to go down to the two, um, the two main banks of the uh, of the oil refining, and that is allowing me to have a decent amount. I was going to say a decent amount of everything coming out. It's not so much, but we are, we are producing some refined oil down the end, and we're then also processing the hydrogen into refined oil, as we've been doing before. Is that this set of machines? Yes, it is. These, yes, one's taking in hydrogen and producing and coal and producing refined oil. So over here, we're producing quite a lot of refined oil here, and that's enough then to satisfy the demand at the moment. This factory is a horrible, horrible tangle, I will happily admit that, but let's, let's sort of run over quickly what the areas do. So we've got the oil being brought in from here, from here from the tower, from this mine and from the mine over here. It's all being merged together into one belt here, um, all stacked to double high. That's being painted, it's then being split off here and fed into all of these refineries across here. Which are producing the um, which are producing refined oil and hydrogen. Over here, we've got a row of machines that will turn that if there's a shortage of hydrogen, will turn the refined oil into hydrogen. And over here, we've got some machines that if there's a shortage of refined oil, will turn hydrogen into refined oil. So whichever one there's an excess of, the, these the, uh, those machines will kick in to make sure that the suitable amount is produced. That is actually working. I'm, I'm slightly surprised because it felt weird and cobbled together, although I did think it through fairly hard between episodes, so I was reasonably convinced. But it does all seem to be working in that if we look over here, we've got a full belt of um, double stacked... Is that double stacked? It's not double stacked. We've got a full belt of partially double stacked refined oil being passed out into the, in, into the factory. And we've got a full belt of hydrogen also being passed out into the factory, which I haven't bothered to double stack because that hasn't been needed yet. So those are, yes, those are working. It, this, this, the system is, this system is, is working. We've got, actually, we've got double stacks coming in here and no single stacks coming in here for whatever reason. I don't know. I, I, I've sort of lost, lost, lost the plot a little bit with exactly how this, 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 all this system works. I should probably rebuild it somewhere else and make it a bit more, a bit more sensibly thought out. But, but I haven't done that yet. But maybe that'll, that, maybe that'll be a future town. We'll see how this gets on. So in order to do future science, we're going to need to feed. The supp a supply of the refined oil and of the uh, hydrogen into a logistics tower in order to feed that out to wherever it's required. So that's going to be interesting. It's going to put a massive load on the system for a while, but after that, I think it's not going to. I think it's just going to calm down and basically be okay. We'll have the same sort of system. It's just there's going to be some little robots carrying stuff around in the middle of it. And again, we'll see whether this can actually keep up. If it can't, that means I can then build an additional one of these facilities somewhere else, and. I don't know if there's a prioritization thing I can do with the um, with the robots. Uh, we got we can choose to supply and demand. Um, we can set ranges. We can set charge power and how much the, what the how much the drones have to be loaded. But I don't think we can prioritize one over another. So um, never mind. But yeah, we can set up we can set up an additional one of these as as and when required. Oh, here's some more of my uh, charging towers. That's convenient. So that yes, yeah, so that's that's that. Um, I've put a, I put in in order to get all of this working. I, I've put in various other mining areas. Is this, is this one of them? Yes. Yeah, so here we go. We've got another crude oil mine here that's digging it up, passing it along here straight into a uh, logistics system. So from here, the 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 um, the oil can be just picked up from here by by the logistics bots, taken over to wherever it's needed, and we can we can we can process it there. There's copper mines. There's iron mines set up. I just can't really see them because it's night time. Um, <laughs> Um, because the map view is not great for spotting things. Oh, that's the one. That, that's the one that's got the really, really long belt. These days, that would just have a um, a logistics tower over here. But I, I built this before I had logistics. We've got coal going on over here, so we're digging up lots of coal, feeding it into this logistics tower. We've got. I, I know there's copper and and um, or, or, and, or, and um, iron ore being dug up somewhere. But one thing to note is that we now have less than a million copper ore left on this planet. This is not a great planet for generating copper. So. 
I mean, he's been okay so far, but in the future, we might start to struggle, because there aren't an enormous number of these copper veins. Okay, there's one here that I haven't tapped yet, um, so maybe I should, but there's not, there's not a huge amount of copper. So what I could do is I had a bit of a look around. This planet, also not so great. This only has, this has a relatively small amount of copper, but it has loads of silicon and quite a bit of titanium, which is what I'm currently pulling up from it and shipping back. But this planet has 15 million copper and five and a half million iron as well. So I think at some point, if we start to have, start to struggle with copper production on um, my planet over here, which is called uh, Alifa 2, Mediterranean, that might be the name of it, I'm not sure. Whereas this one is Ash and Ashen Galisol. Um, if I start to run out of copper on Mediterranean, then I might head out to uh, Scarlet Ice Lake and start digging up uh, and start put producing my um, copper there and shipping it back over to Ica uh, over to Mediterranean, as I'm currently doing with the titanium and the um, uh, and, and the uh, silicon. And that's because that, that works quite nicely. The the interplanetary logistics works. Yeah, just works. It's easy, it's, easy, it's easy to set up. So I think that's probably something I, I will I will do as and when it's necessary. Another thing I'm interested in doing is harvesting hydrogen and deuterium from Gas Giant um, because that has collectible hydrogen and collectible deuterium. I know I'm going to need hydrogen in quite large quantities because the next science pack, I believe, requires me to turn hydrogen into deuterium. So I think what's going to happen there is I'm going to collect both of these. Probably, I don't know exactly how this is going to work. Maybe I'll send a, a, a spacecraft with a scoop on it to fly through the atmosphere and it'll bring back a mix of both. And then I'll need to turn some of the hydrogen into deuterium in order to keep that running. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how that works in the next stream. But uh, for now, uh, things seem to basically be okay. I've got this cracking um, Dyson uh, swarm going on here. I finally got my um, Dyson, Dyson Swarm sail, solar sails up to lasting for um, I think it's two hours I've just hit. So if we look in here we can see that they will last for 7,200 seconds which I think is probably two hours. Um, sounds about right. Which is pretty good. It means I can launch them. I, I, it means all these ones I'm launching they're just adding well they're sort of adding to the number, number up there. Um, now I've got this lovely huge quantity of power I can generate. But in order to get that to go even further. I still want to make the Gravitronic uh, lenses, which, I'll talk, which I've talked about in the stream, and I'll talk about more in the next stream. I think my robot's doing Pilates. Um, stop that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's there's still lots to do. There's lots of science to be done. If I zoom out a little bit, we can see that, but that's running very slowly, so I need to boost the science production. I also need to do lots more. That's all the upgrades. On the technology side, I can eventually get down to, I can eventually perhaps get to the gravity matrix, which is the green science, but there's a couple of things, okay, still a couple of things I need to do before I can get that, like quantum chips. There's lots more to be done, but things are going pretty well at this point. My only real, con I, I, mean, I had a slight concern that I might start to run out of space on the planet when I start put putting out towns, but actually, so far, it seems pretty good. I can spread them out a bit, sort of around the equator. I think this is going to be okay. I think we're going to have plenty of space. It's not going to be a worry for a good while, so I don't, I'm not too concerned about that, really. So, thank you for watching. I hope you'll come along to the uh, stream on Wednesday to see me uh, carrying on with this. Oh, there's one of the inter interplanetary ships leaving. Um, to go and get some... Why did it say graphene on it? I don't know. I can't look at it. Um, yeah, they're, they're, I'll, they'll be doing another stream on Wednesday. So I'll uh, be, be trying to put in some of the things I've been, been just been talking about now. Like more, more science towns. And getting things running quickly. Because that's, how, that's what you do in these sort of games. Um, and then there'll be the Factorio with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 stream on Monday. That's another good stream worth coming along to. That's the multiplayer one. And it's the big popular one on my channel at the moment. So, yeah, come along and check that out. And as ever, there's all of the um, the catch-up videos at the weekend, as, you, as you're as very aware, much aware, because you're watching one right now. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the stream sponsor. That's trefoil.be. They run game ser hosting servers, so you can, you can get a Factorio or a Minecraft server from there, anything, anything like that you need. And if you use the code LawrencePlays on checkout, you'll get 20% off. I'll get a kickback. Everybody's happy. It'd be great. Let's, let's, let's see if we can get that going. So, thank you for watching. I'll uh, leave you with a, a nice view of the planet, and I uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.